All right, well, welcome back, all you budding DMs. We're back in Fantasy Ground. This episode, we're going to talk about how to manipulate and add maps to Fantasy Grounds so that you can uh, set up your adventures however you want and uh, talk about, uh, uh, you know, a few of the important things you need to deal with as a Dungeon Master when you're talking about maps and uh, running uh, sessions for your players. So... Obviously, Maps is going to be in your Images and Maps tab. If you don't see that tab, come down to your library and make sure you're on GM mode. Again, you may or may not see exactly what I have because I have the Ultimate Edition. If you're running on the demo or the free edition, some of these options might not be available to you. Uh, but if you are on the Ultimate Edition, you should see what I see. Uh, so you have the GM, you have the player, you have the Crate PC, and you have the All. Oh, I just like to keep it on All. Uh, is the Dungeon Master, so that way I can manipulate whatever I need whenever I need it. So again, uh, maps and images. So uh, you should be able to pull up, uh, you know, if you have any adventures or anything that you've loaded in, if you've purchased anything, you should be able to pull up uh, some Dungeon Master guide maps. If here's map number one, etc. and etc. So. We want to actually go in and add a brand new map here. You can see I've got quite a few new maps loaded in here. So we're just going to um, just minimize the window here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into, uh, we're going to go in and uh, see if we can find a map, right? Whatever. D&D uh, dungeon map. See what we can find. And we'll just search by DND. Go to images. Again, we're not trying to steal anybody's copyrighted information. We're just looking for a map for our 5th edition uh, Dungeons and Dragons game. Uh, possibly uh, if we're looking at a dungeon or whatever. Maybe we'll see something that's already been created that would save us time and effort. Obviously, there's lots of different map software out there. You can create your own maps if you've got the time to do that. Uh, let's see. Let's look at this one here. And first thing you want to do is kind of look at the size. You can see down here, this is 294 by 400. It's kind of smallish in size. So you probably don't want to load that in there because by the time you zoom in on it, everything will be blurry and it just won't look very good. So you want to try and find a map that's pretty decent size. If you actually hover your, mo blah, you hover your mouse over the map, it should tell you. Here's one that's 1600 by 1115. That's a nice, a really nice size map. This is the red brand hideouts, of course. You know, whatever image we take is the image we're going to get. So if it's got, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, is the different rooms and uh, it's part of something like this. You can see here, here's um, room number one, room number two, room number three. Obviously, we're going to get the whole image. And this, of course, you save the map and then you go into Photoshop and edit it or use any editing software. Right now I'm not really showing you all that stuff. I just want to just show you how to maybe find a decent map and get it imported into Fantasy Grounds. Here's the Dragon Hatchery. It's a pretty decent size. There's tons and tons of different kinds of maps out there. Um, let's see if we can find one here. That might be my might be good for us. So all kinds of ones up here. Obviously, we can go to underground or underground, kind of refine our search a little bit and see what we come up with. Might help us out here. Let's see if we can find. Oh, that's a nice big one there as well. This is the underground dungeon. Let's take a look here. Horrors Hollow. All right, that one's not bad, but I don't want to use this one just because I want to show you something else and it would be preferably better if it already had squares on the map. Uh, I think I already actually have that one downloaded. What about this one here? No, I'm not, you know, got to find one that matches what we're looking for, right? Mm, here's one that says high resolution. Let's do, a, let's do an, a, a search for underground high resolution. That would even be better. High resolution usually gives you better quality, so when you zoom in on it, uh, hopefully there won't be any uh, issues 
with uh, blurriness or not being able to see what's on the map, etc. Hmm. Actually, I already have that one downloaded as well. A lot of good ones out there. We just need to find one that we don't actually currently have. That one's kind of small, and that one's kind of small. This is a big one. What's this one? This one looks good. Nice big size. 2150 by 1650. So this is actually a huge, huge map. So we're the UA. We'll save this one. So right click on it. Uh, we're going to save the picture as, and then you're going to remember where you save it to. That's the most important thing. Uh, let's go with, uh, I don't know. We'll just save it as number 55. You can name it whatever you want. doesn't really matter. Okay. Uh, so now all we have to do is go into our image and maps tab and click on the little brown button that edits the list. You can actually go in and uh, delete maps. So you can see if I don't want to keep these maps anymore, I can just delete them. And uh, then I guess just drag over our new map, which is number 55. There we go. Excellent. So let's take a look at number 55. We'll go ahead and maximizer window there it is oh you can see how nice and big and beautiful this sucker is beautiful looking map so we can uh, use our button down here so manipulating maps is probably the hardest thing in the game to do for the dungeon master and the players especially when you're talking about bigger size maps so uh first thing i always do if i get a big map like this right click on it choose the resize option and then choose the top option up to the top small size. So that way it will make it actually a nice manageable size for us. And now what I like to do is just resize it. So what you want to do is come down here to the bottom right hand corner and you can drag it however big you think you need it, depending on how much room you're going to use, how many other windows you have open, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you can always, uh, if you zoom in really close, and you're like, wow, okay, now I need to zoom out. You know, you use a scroll button on your wheel on your mouse, the scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in and out, right? So that's um, what you do there. You can also, uh, if you like that zoom level, but you need to find a different spot in the map, what you're going to do is you're going to click and hold your left mouse button down when your mouse is on the little, I don't know, I call it the, uh, the gold cross because it kind of looks like a gold cross. And as long as you got your left mouse button down, you can just drag it around, left, right, up, down, and you'll maneuver around the map, as you can see. So if the party's way over here, say on the east edge, right, it may be uh, down towards the bottom, maybe they're in this room or whatever, and uh, you'll see everyone down there. So click and hold the gold button. I'm sure it's got some technical name, but we're calling it the gray button, or the gold button, sorry, the gold button. Uh, and then... You can zoom around your map that way. Again, zooming in and out. You can also hold your control key down on your uh, keyboard. And then if you left click, it'll actually resize your map. So if, if you make your map too big and you're like, oh shoot, that's that's too big. Hold control down, left click, and then you can resize the map edge to determine how big it's gonna be. So uh, map manipulation takes a little bit of practice. Get in there and practice with it. Um, it's not going to, um, it's not going to do anything, uh, you know, to hurt, you're not going to hurt anything to manipulate your map around. You can close it. And of course, just like every other window in fantasy ground, super easy, wherever it was, whatever size it was, when you bring it back, that's where it's going to be just like that. So, um, you know, closing your maps and then bringing them back really quickly. You can even hot link your, uh, your maps your monsters, your damage, all that stuff. Uh, down on your uh, quick link bar down here at the bottom, you can see I've actually got damage magic missile down here at quick link. If you got something in there, you don't need it anymore, right click on it and just go to clear slot. It takes it out of there, right? So now all I have to do is take a uh, map, whatever I want to call it, and I'm going to drag it down, uh, left click on it, just hold my left mouse button down. As long as I hold my mouse button down, I've got to hold the map. I just bring it down to my quick link bar and I let go of it and it'll actually give me the name of the map. And now if I want to bring that map up, I just simply click on it. Boom. Just like that. So uh, very quick and easy. You have 12 
different quick link bars, but you have access to many, many bars. You can actually hold your control key down and you'll notice it will switch to control one through 12. You can also hit your, hold your shift key down as well and it'll switch to S one through 12. And you can also hold your alt key down and it'll switch to A one through 12. So the alt, the shift and the control key and no key. So you got no key, one through 12, shift one through 12, control one through 12, and uh, alt one through 12. Not only that, <laughs> but you can actually hold control and shift down and you will notice it says shift control one to 12. You can also hold shift and alt down and it'll switch to shift A. You can also hold control and alt down and it'll switch to CA. So you got shift control, you have shift assault, or shift control, shift alt, and uh, control alt, as well as all these other combinations. So I think if you add all these up, you actually have 96 different quick links that you can use for maps, encounters, monsters, damage, whatever. Uh, so you have plenty of time if you're DMing ahead of time to set up, well, you know, you only have to set up so much if you're playing for three or four hours or whatever. You're only gonna probably use a couple maps, a couple NPCs, a couple monsters. You can quick link all this stuff ahead of time so you can just quickly click on it, have access to it uh, rather uh, easy and uh, get everything up and going. So, you know, maybe you start off with everything on the control bar if it's the first part of the adventure and then the middle part of the adventure maybe you set everything in the control key and then towards the end of the adventure you use the shift key and uh, you know if you need more keys than that uh, use control shift control alt um, shift alt all these different combinations that you have access to so again control left click as long as I'm left clicking I'm dragging the size of my window right so I can make it, you know, okay, well, I got to get more windows open. So I need this smaller Just sh to move, maneuver the map around. You want to click on the gray bar, drag it around again. As long as I'm holding my left mouse button down, it will move it around. So that's map manipulation. Uh, again, test it out. Um, practice with it. Have your pra players practice with it. Uh, it does take some getting used to, I will say that. So, uh, you know, map manipulation, understanding maps and everything, pretty, pretty important part of Fantasy Grounds if you use maps. So, uh, again, close it down. We can, um, we can actually uh, quick link it. So, uh, you can see up here in the top, let's see, this is going to be for you guys, it's going to be over on this side, I think, the lock button so we can lock it or unlock it once it's locked you can't do any manipulations to it unlock it you will see you have several things you can do to it uh, one thing of note if it's unlocked and I change the name of it say we're gonna call this the dungeon of death right and now I've uh, quick linked it uh, notice over here in our image list, it actually calls it the Dungeon of Death. But when we click linked it, it was map number 55. So it didn't update this. So right click, clear slot, and then drag it down there. So you don't want to drag these down until you have your map all completed with your encounters and everything. Uh, and we'll look at uh, setting up encounters and uh, how to manipulate uh, creating encounters and placing uh, hot spots on your maps and all that in probably the next episode because I don't think we're going to actually have time to do it in this episode. So, uh, yeah, so just remember if I then change this map, change the name of it or do anything with it, it's quick linked back to the original here based upon the name and everything. So, uh, you know, if I was to say, let's just take an NPC and we'll just throw this image to or, we'll talk about that later. All right, uh, if I take a creature and I actually throw the image on there, there we go, right? Um, now if I close the map, right, and I bring it up, it actually keeps the information. It's just not named what it was 
from the quick link. It doesn't change that. If I want to change the name of it manually, I can do that as well. Just right click on it and go to edit label. And so you can go in there and say the quick dungeon of death version, you know, maybe the quick, the dungeon of death two or whatever, you know, so you know, you've updated it already. However you do it, that's fine. I noticed I just dragged a monster in here. You notice how big it is because, well, it's a large creature. But anyways, that's beside the point. The reason it is so big is because we actually don't have any scaling. The map doesn't know how to how, um, you know, each area is. And we, us as players and DMs, we know that each square is usually five feet on a map unless you're doing like an overlaying map. So this is a dungeon and our players are walking around in it and they go, oh, well, that's five feet a piece. This monster is like, what, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 feet wide. It's because our map doesn't know how big each square is. So the way we do that, very simply, is uh, we're going to zoom in a little bit. We're going to right click the map and we're going to go to layers. So we're going to layer it. We're going to layer it with a grid so it knows and what we're hoping to do is lay our grid on top of their grid as best we can so that all the lines and everything match up. So we're going to go to layers and then we're going to go to set grid. So the bottom option down here, set grid. It's going to change your mouse cursor in like this little, I don't know, star or whatever you want to call it. And what you do is you left click and you drag and you're going to create a box around one of those squares. So you're basically telling it this is a box and it'll lay the grid down based upon how well you do <laughs> you may see the grid line up perfectly or it may not if you don't line it up perfectly here's what you do and trust me you won't lay it up per down perfectly uh, you're gonna unlock it when you unlock it you're gonna see some more options here on your thing because now we've got a, a second layer we've got our map layer and now we've got our grid layer what we want to do is go to our grid layer, which is this button here, which says toggle grid, tool, grid tools. We're going to click on that and then we can adjust it left, right, up, down. We can make it bigger or smaller. So first thing I like to do is kind of try to line it up as best as I can and see, is it too big? Is it too small? And, uh, you know, move them up and down. Yeah, it looks like it's too big. So I'm going to hit the minus sign. And then I'm going to need to do the same thing over and over again until we get to a point where it's going to be super, super hard. It still looks like it's too big. Let's, uh, let's try that and see if that's better. And up a little bit. You can see it looks great here. But then when we get over here, it's like wanky. And... Sometimes it's just really hard based upon the map, the size of the grids on the map to make everything look perfect. Let's see if we go small, smaller again. Sometimes you can get it if you're lucky. See, that's a little bit better, but look, see over here, our grids are not lined up. And that looks like it's because it's not big enough, right? So if we make it bigger, it's going to... It's it's going to try and line it up. And like I said, you might need to manipulate with it a couple times. You can see we get it over here, but not over here. So it's it's not the right size. Let's go up. Uh, that's a little bit better. Let's see if we can, you know, kind of fine tune it a little bit. And down a little bit would be great. Ah, look at that. That's not bad. That is not bad at all. Considering that is not bad. If you can't get it for whatever reason, all you have to do is right click, go to layers, and then go to grid off. Click on grid off. And it'll turn it off and then go back and do the same thing. Turn your grid back on. Re try and resize it. It might take you a couple times to get it, but I'm actually pretty pleased with that. Um, sometimes, especially with bigger maps, you can't. you can get one side of it right, but you can't get the other side. You know, so you kind of, you got to kind of, you know, figure out which side the players are going to be on and then maybe resize the grid later on if they're adventuring past that point. So if we actually go back to uh, NPCs and we drag, is it this thing? Oh, I did it again. Ah. You want to actually uh, open this up? No, that's not it. It is... 
I'm not sure which one that guy is. What is this? Does it tell me? Can I actually look at this? No, it's just a, basically at this point, it's a nothing. It's just an icon because we haven't really told the, the game at this point when we added this. Uh, we're going to delete this token. We're going to delete the token. There we go. So is it this one? Yeah, there you go. All right, so now watch what happens when I drag this guy on to the screen. What? It knows to put that monster in there. Now, of course, we need to know is this guy is large or whatever. Uh, uh, it's probably staring me in the face. Where does it say? Um, large. Yes, yeah, so it's a large creature. But we've got it in a five foot square, which doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Not really. So what I have to do is I basically have to turn off, if I go to layers, I can actually, um, oh, nope, that's not what I want to do. I want to right click on the thing and I want to tell it to release the token scale. All right. So to release the token scale for us so that it would now, it now sizes it based upon the coding in the game for, I guess, um, a large creature. This is a large aberrant. Uh, but notice it's not 40 feet by 40 feet, which is the important thing. We don't want it. So, you know, that's about the right size of it. That's fine. And that's, uh, so now what I want to do is I want to uh, lock that token scale, right? Because I don't want... If I drag, uh, say, our party onto the screen now, and you know, I don't want them to become super big, right? Uh, problem is, once you start adding the players and stuff to it, if I release the token scale on the stuff, if I go and uh, say for this, if I release the token scale, sometimes depending on the size of the token, it might make it really big. If that's the case, then delete the token, right? Delete the token and then redrag it over there, so that way you can manipulate it a little easier, right? And on this guy, uh, we want to release the token scale. There, see, I made this guy a little bit bigger, but I want to uh, lock this token. And now we're going to delete this guy. There we go. So it's a little bit of work. I wish there was a way to manipulate just the token you're working on, like right-click it, you know, and then tell it. Uh, make it bigger or make it smaller, you know, and like, you know, the plus and the minuses we have up here. If it would do that, oh, that would be super good. So I'm sure maybe Fantasy Grounds 2, maybe they'll do that or whatever. So now I can just, uh, if I bring on Dog Sidious now, uh, a good player here. You can see this is the right scale. This is about the right scale and uh, we're good to go. So you can right click, you can layer, and the next thing you want to do is you want to enable the mask. So this is another layer. So we've got our map layer. We now have our grid layer. And now on top of that, we have our mask. So mask means the players don't see anything. It's just blank to them, right? And so now let's say the players are, uh, let's grab some other players here. Maybe they're starting in this hallway here. I, as a DM, I want to drag them down get them ready. And now what I want to do is I want to actually open up and allow them to have access to it. If it's locked, if your map's locked, you can't do anything uh, uh, that much. So make sure whether it's locked or not locked. If you're not in, uh, say, um, mask mode, let's say I'm in pencil mode, right, and it's locked, then I won't be able to actually uh, get rid of the mask. So unlock and then change you know let's get the eraser out let's get rid of all this junk out there there we go and um we'll talk about pens and pencils so if i go to mask mode and now i lock it i'm in mask mode which means i can now release uh the darkness around the players and i can you know let them know okay well there's a uh, door a double uh uh, double wide stone door, huge door at the end of the hallway in front of you. The side walls are covered with marble. It seems to be some kind of a very fancy uh, temple or whatever you were in, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, when the party, uh, you know, moves up here and, okay, we're going to open the door, you know, blah, blah, blah. 
then I can scroll over and I can say, okay, well, you now can see this and maybe a little bit over this way and a little, a little bit over this way, like this, uh, you know, as they, you know, crack the door open or whatever. And so several ways to manipulate this again, I can hold the control key down. If I accidentally uh, really, um, you know, remove too much of the mask, hold your control key down and you can see it turns blue. If it's blue, that means it's going to add it back, right? So you can kind of fine tune what they see or what they don't see. Uh, if it's red, it'll remove. And if it's blue, it'll add the mask back. Control key does that, by the way, just so you know. So you can kind of, uh, you know, decide what the players see based upon their actions. If they throw the door open, you might just release the whole, you know, the whole room. Maybe they only have 60 feet of um, dark vision, right? So maybe they can only see 60 feet in the dark. Maybe they don't have a light source, whatever, you know. So you manipulate the mask layer, which is going to be your top layer on top of your map. You can decide what the players see and what they don't by adding or subtracting mask uh, to what they see. So anything that doesn't have that gray fog over it, means that the players can see that. So, you know, okay, well, I enter into the room and maybe there's, oops, maybe there's torches or whatever in the room and it's light, it's, it's lit up. Uh, what you can do is just, obviously, you can zoom out a little bit and just, you know, reveal the whole room to everyone at that point. You know, something like maybe like that. And maybe, you know, I want to get this little spot where they see the door over there and then they see the entrance to another hallway. And I like to kind of fine tune any of the entrances in a little bit, make sure they can see what what is there, right? As far as your monsters go on your map, right? Um, you can actually right click on it and say, turn anything visible or not visible, right? So I can say always visible or always invisible. So right now I can have this thing just sitting on the map that they don't know. Maybe it's behind the boxes. They can't see it. I've revealed the room to them, but until, you know, oh, okay, I'm going to come over here and search this room. And then all of a sudden I can right click and go visible, always set visible. And now it's visible and maybe we roll initiative or whatever, you know, whatever the situation is. So you can manipulate any, any of the tokens. You can actually have them ahead of time. We're going to see more of that when we talk about encounters, placing encounters, quick clicking all your encounters on your maps, your mini maps and all that stuff, probably in the next episode, because this one's gone pretty long. Uh, but that's usually how things go. You plan on certain things. But uh, so we've added a map. We've scaled it because we put on the, uh, the layer Right, we've gone in and we we turned the grid on, and then when we turn the grid on, we're going to draw it and we're going to try and line up all the lines. Now, of course, if you uh, we're going to uh, oops, that's not what I want. I want the desktop here. So if if you download a map and it doesn't have grid lines on it, uh, which we will let's see, let's see, there was one. <sighs> Maybe this one was it. That kind of has grid lines on it. I'm looking for one that doesn't have grid lines. Oh, yeah, there's a good example. All right, so we're going to save this picture as, and we're going to say save, right? Now I'm going to go back into Fantasy Grounds. I'm going to go into Images. I'm going to drag this image over, right? And there we go. So now I can right click, maximize the window. And one of these, there, that's not it. Is it this one? There we go. All right, so now we got this super cool map here. Maybe there's an encounter. Maybe this is a swamp, and this is maybe a, a goblin outpost, or maybe a lizard man outpost, or whatever your situation is. Now it's up to you to decide how big you want it. So the cool thing is this map doesn't have squares or hexagons on it. So I can determine this size, and I don't need to try and line everything up perfectly, which is super good. You saw how much trouble I had earlier in the episode. So again, right click, layers, and I'm gonna set the grid. Now let's say this is a table that's maybe five feet wide, so I'm just trying to figure out, mm, is that good? And that doesn't look bad. Again, I can go in as long as I don't have it locked and I can, you know, maybe I want 
the grid to be more to the right because maybe I want to line something up perfectly. Uh, maybe I want to have an idle right here or an NPC or something. So I want the square right there, right? So I can kind of fine tune it just like I did the other maps. I can move it left, right, up, down, whatever. Uh, you can just leave it right where it is if you want, if you're fine with it. You don't like it? Again, right click, layers, turn grid off. Boom, gah, grid's gone. Let's try it again. Right click, layers, set grid. Again, I'm going to make it about 48. Try and remember, size 48. All right, and then I'm going to move this over a little bit because I want a NPC. Maybe up here, maybe is the uh, the boss, and I don't want him too close. Players are coming this way. I don't want him too close, so I want to make sure he's not standing on the edge of, you know, maybe this is like a protective barrier. I don't want my monster standing on the protective barrier. Speaking of which, you can right-click layers. You can also, okay, talked about masking it. Always mask. I always mask. And what I try to do is ahead of time, I, I figure out where the players are going to be. Players are probably going to be down here, right? So they're going to start here. I'm just going to place their player characters here. I'm going to try and figure out how much they're going to see to begin with and get that set. You know, uh, maybe a little bit more. Players are going to be here. And uh, since they're coming around, maybe this is like, a, like I said, like a barrier or something. Once they get around the barrier, maybe they can see inside. Maybe they're sneaking up, whatever the situation. So I'll give them maybe a little bit. Maybe that's a little bit too much. Um, again, I'm going to hold the control key down and kind of fill it back in. You can actually hold the shift key down. And what you can do with this is you can actually do like a circle. Or, you know, let's try that again. You know, it kind of, you can fine tune your edge a little bit. Uh, again, control key, blue, puts it back. Uh, and um, red removes it, right? So maybe I want to do something like that-ish, you know, whatever. Um, and then, you know, I can, uh, I can rename this. Uh, let's call this the um, Goblin Swamp map or whatever you want to call it that's fine we can lock it if we want uh the goblin swamp map i can drag it down here drop it in my quick link bar i can close it work on something else that's like oh shoot i need that uh, swamp map i just come down here and click it notice it's got everything set like it is you can even set up your encounters and stuff we're going to do that in the next episode so thanks everyone for joining me if you are a Bunning DM, just know that Fantasy Grounds is a great program. Um, your players don't need to be experts at it. Hopefully they can watch a couple videos, tutorial videos out there. There's plenty of people that have done tutorial videos. Um, I'm doing kind of a DM, but players can use this as a tutorial video as well uh, to learn how to operate Fantasy Grounds and understand the basic concepts. That's pretty much all you need is, is fundamentally... Uh, have you and your players know and understand. But as a DM, if you are a DM or you're looking to get into any kind of role-playing game, uh, Fantasy Ground covers a lot of different genres uh, and uh, sci-fi and uh, fantasy and, uh, and even um, with uh, Deadlands. And, uh, they have some you know, weird kind of horror setting. So, I mean, there's a lot of variety in Fantasy Grounds, but just know you can add things to Fantasy Grounds. You can manipulate things very fast. Um, it's very functional. It's pretty easy just to mess around and understand how it works. And uh, I, I highly, highly, highly recommend you get it. If you're going to be the DM, just go ahead and buy the Ultimate Edition. Uh, so that way you can have your players join you for free. They can just download the demo version and they can join you for free and they don't need to purchase anything. Get, have each of your players give you 10 bucks or 15 bucks or whatever you work out um, so you can get the ultimate edition. Then you can have players joining you, leaving you. You don't have to worry. You don't have to tell them, oh, you got to buy Fantasy Grounds or whatever. Just buy the Ultimate Edition. You can buy already pre-built adventure packs. So if you um, look at our story module here, we can look. And we actually have the Lost Minds of Fendelver. And it's all coded into the game. Um, I can just um, start with that and just start running through it. You can see um, 
you know, here's all the information on the background story. Uh, you can use this to, uh, you know, drag this over and drop it in, into the chat so your players can have access to it. Oh, is it locked? Is that what the issue is here? There we go. So there's the background. So if you want your players to have access to it, you just drag it down there and then click on the link and it'll pop up on their screen, a little window, and they can read all the background. Obviously, you're not going to do that with uh, the background information, but maybe... Um, Maybe other things might be important, uh, you know, like, you know, monsters or whatever it talks about the different stat blocks of monsters and the different types of monsters. And this, I'm just giving an example here, but um, yeah, so it's got all the stuff in there. But if you, you know, if you're like me and you like to create your own stuff, which we're going to eventually do, I think we're going to do one more episode. We're going to talk about quick linking and, uh, encounters, uh, how to set up, um, you know, how to set up your maps with your encounters already pre-planned and uh, how the flow of that all works. And then I think uh, once we got that episode in, we pretty much covered, we covered the basics, right? Um, we covered, um, we covered the maps in this episode, uh, the previous episode. What did we cover in the previous episode? I can't remember, but we, so this is like our third episode. And then the fourth one, we'll talk about uh, quick linking and creating adventures and all that stuff. And then once we get these four in, in the books, maybe we'll just uh, start off, we'll just create a nice little adventure, show you how uh, fun it is and interesting and uh, how quick and easy you can do things in Fantasy Grounds if you like to create your own stuff. So yeah, this episode's gone a little, little bit longer than I thought it was going to, but we'll see you in the next episode. So thanks everyone for watching. Be sure to leave your thoughts, comments, suggestions down below. If you want to see something specific, now's your time to ask. Uh, we can certainly get around to showing you that uh, hopefully in the next episode or two. So appreciate everyone watching. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you next time.